Hello. So in this presentation, I would like to discuss the two concepts of imagination and creativity. However, I don't want to discuss how these two concepts relate to art. I want to discuss and analyze the true definitions of these two concepts and how they relate to education. Now, although the Australian curriculum uh, has included the idea of creative thinking in the 21st century skills and the curriculum, I don't believe these concepts of imagination and creativity are truly understood by educators. And because of this, I feel like it's really hard to implement them or even see why to implement them in the first place, which is a real disadvantage as creativity is an important capacity for students to possess uh, in order to face this fast paced world that we live in. So therefore, in this presentation, I'm gonna be talking about these two ideas in detail and actually analyze why they're important and how educators can implement them in a real classroom environment instead of just intellectually understanding what they mean. So what is imagination and creativity and why does it relate to more than just the arts? So let's start off with what's the difference between imagination and creativity? So from what I've read about imagination, it is a very complex idea and it sort of defies a true definition since it is uh, in the mind and it's sort of unobservable. However, according to many theorists, imagination is an essential means to think beyond what is given to you uh, through the form of mental concepts that aren't present in reality. And in doing so, students can imagine new possibilities and improve their ability to perceive reason and make sense of situations and circumstances. On the other hand, creativity is a result of an executed imagination and it relates more to generating ideas or solutions that are novel, useful and effective. So from the definitions that I've just given, it's really easy to see how imagination and creativity relate to more than just the arts because imagining possibilities and generating solutions apply to almost all areas of education. And just a few examples would be writing an analytical essay, uh, answering an open-ended question, and it's especially relevant in problem solving which requires the use of your imagination. So now that we know what imagination and creativity truly are, Let's analyze why they are truly important to education. But before we answer this question, it's important to note what the actual goal of education is. So the way I see it, there's two ways to view education. There's the teacher's perspective, uh, which the goal of education should be to allow students to evolve, grow and affect their future possibilities and in turn the future of society and on the other end of the spectrum there's the government perspective and their main goal is probably efficiency however if the desired effect of education was efficiency then creativity and imagination would still be very helpful towards this goal as the imagination's capacity to test out ideas in the mind before acting upon them uh, is a powerful tool to avoid wasting energy and time not only that, but it also exercises one's ability to analyze, synthesize, and make judgments before actually acting. And if the desired effect of education was to help students evolve and build a better future, then even the simple act of creative thinking aligns with this goal, as this sort of thinking orients human beings towards the future through the production of new ideas and new solutions. Furthermore, using imagination uh, to view things from different perspectives is a process that will ultimately improve students' critical thinking and metacognitive abilities, as they'll be thinking about their thinking from a non-biased standpoint. In regard to more specific benefits of imagination and creativity, the use of these throughout the pattern of problem solving is invaluable. And this is because when faced with a novel or complex problem, human beings need to utilize their creativity and imagination. Um, human beings can't simply start by gathering and analyzing data about the problem because cognition doesn't naturally form an abstract understanding of the problem. This understanding can only come from creating possible solutions and considering how they might work. Now, in reality, this non-linear pattern of problem solving may appear a little bit chaotic, especially in a classroom environment. Uh, but as a teacher, it's really important to note that this is not a defect and it's actually a mark of an intelligent and creative learning process. On the other hand, over-directive teaching is the true defect as it doesn't foster these capabilities in students and it doesn't provide the tension to challenge students uh, to think beyond what is given to them. Now, although it may be uncomfortable to learn, think, and create outside your comfort zone, uh, this is the way that it should be. Because if all you learn throughout your education is basic knowledge, 
you'll only have basic understandings and a foundation that is meant to be built upon. Eventually, students need to be encouraged to leave the certainty of the known because the more someone experiences, reflects and knows, the more choices they have. Now, it's all well and good to understand the concepts of imagination and creativity, but if you're an educator, understanding this isn't enough. You must actually know how to foster these capabilities uh, and know what actions that you can take immediately uh, in order to foster your students' imagination and creativity in a real classroom environment. So first of all, it's important to realise that there actually is no single way to teach imaginatively because that would defeat the purpose of imagination and the purpose of bringing new, unusual and creative approaches to the surface. However, there are guidelines that you can follow and there are things that you can keep in mind when fostering an imaginative environment. So the basis of fostering fostering creativity and imagination in a classroom comes from play because without play there's no flexibility and that makes it almost impossible to be receptive in the learning process and this is why allowing individuals to play with ideas formed in their imagination in order to create ideas and solutions is vital however although play is necessary to creativity not all play is creative so in order to make it creative and beneficial play depends on two ingredients and that is safety and stimulation so when i say safety what i'm referring to is creating a safe learning environment where students creativity and imagination is encouraged and i'm also referring to ensuring that your students feel comfortable within social interactions whether that's interactions between you and the student or whether that's student on student interactions so let's start off with the environment why is the environment important well, the reason it's important is because the environment is an intrinsic part of the student's creative development. And because of this, creativity can emerge through continuous interactions between the child and his or her close environment, which can garner good or bad consequences depending on how you shape that environment. So how do you create an environment that fosters creativity and imagination? One thing that you can do is allow space for students to use their senses and interpretive abilities. So in other words, giving students more freedom to explore with their own senses uh, and allow them to use their own mental materials for their imagination to operate. And another great thing that you can do is construct learning opportunities that lead to worthwhile understandings for particular students. The next part of safety is social interactions. So the reason why these are so important is because the core of creative development consists of the real-time transactions between the child and those within the child's social life, so their peers and you as the teacher. So some great ways to make social interactions more comfortable and ensure that they foster creativity and imagination is to be flexible and adaptive in response to unique demands of practice. Another great thing is to encourage students to wrestle with what their views are um, rather than allowing them to forge ahead without regard to consequences of their ideas and the actions that can result from them. And another very significant thing that you can do in a classroom is respect students' subjectivity and their inherent nature to explore. And teachers can do this simply by listening, observing, and understanding the nature of their students, seeing where they are, and then from there they can gently encourage their explorations and fascinations as individuals. Because if what you teach has no space for students to combine themselves with it, it risks just being irrelevant because there's no interest or promise that it'll transform them as individuals. Combining students' prior knowledge with present information also makes the learning process a lot more stimulating for them, which leads into our next ingredient to play, which is stimulation. So when I say stimulation, what I mean is that the learning is challenging enough for students to focus, but not too challenging so that they lose interest. And this can be achieved through thoughtfully imposing limits for students to push up against to break from conventional thought and action. Another way is through collaborative learning, which develops empathetic appreciation for different perspectives. However, I believe the most important strategy to stimulate students' creativity and imagination is questioning. Because applying this strategy to our teaching gives space for true education as opposed to training. So what's the difference between training and education? So stuff like direct teaching and repetition, that's deemed as training. Whereas open-ended questioning to stimulate imagination is an educative activity because the aim of the question is not to get a right answer, but it's to get students to think deeper, break from conventions, and explore ideas that actively make meaning. It's the kind of teaching that encourages the expression of one's subjectivity and the practice at considering other possibilities as opposed to just the known effective solutions. So to summarise, by combining these two elements of safety and stimulation to create a playful learning environment, 
You'll be effectively fostering your students' imagination and creativity regardless of the subject that you teach. And if you can do that as an educator, you will have a major impact on your students' educational experience. So from this presentation, I hope that you can all see that imagination and creativity hold a very important place in education. Although some people hold the opinion that these two concepts only relate to the arts or primarily relate to the arts, I think this presentation has proved otherwise and it's shown that imagination and creativity truly apply to all areas of education and hold numerous benefits, not only for students, not only for teachers, but also the whole education system. It helps teachers develop new practices and keep their students engaged throughout the learning process. It helps students with their metacognitive abilities, their problem solving abilities, and it helps them evolve and grow as individuals. And finally, it helps the education system as a whole. It helps prep students for the fast changing world that they live in today. And by doing this, they'll be able to build better future possibilities for themselves and in turn benefit society as a whole.